Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Tonight, I am doing another one of these monumental recipes here, basically. This is, I mean, something I've done before. It's going to be a pork butt, smoked pork butt, but I am taking one of the best pieces of pork that you can ever get your hands on. This is a, some more of that Heritage Farm pork. Remember that, the Kobe beef of pork I was talking to y'all about? This is it, y'all. And this is their bone-in pork butt, the Boston butt. I want y'all to look at this, and I'm going to post some still pictures of this. I mean, this piece of meat is just so gorgeous. This this pork butt here, I should, but look at the marbling in that piece piece of pork right there. It's and look, I just had my hands right down here on this little piece of fat right here, and they were just going in. I mean, the fat is so soft on this pork, it's unbelievable the texture, the feel of this pork that they're, they're putting out over there at Heritage Farms, North Carolina. I mean, this is unbelievable, y'all, and I've. I, you know, I'm so blessed to be able to cook this piece of pork here. My house, I got a hold of it. A good friend sent it to me. I'm thinking very much. And, you know, it, it, it's just really nice that, that I'm going to be able to cook this piece of pork and share with y'all what a true, real, high, real quality piece of pork is like. I mean, this is, like I said, the Kobe beef of pork. I mean, just look at that marble in there. Look at the thin fat cap. You don't have a bunch of that big old clumpy fat like you see on this pork that we get in our supermarkets and our local grocers and stuff like that. I mean, this is real true gourmet stuff here, and I'm really excited about cooking it, y'all. I've been doing a lot of research, trying to think, how am I going to do this? So I know I've been talking to a lot of my buddies in the barbecue field and friends of mine. Uh, one thing I think I'm going to do first, of course, just like I always do, is I put like a mustard, you know, on the pork first. But I actually, a good friend of mine, Andy, uh, they have this sauce here, Sugar Taylor. And I'll give you a link to that sauce. I've done this before on a pork butt, one of my first pork butts that I ever did. This, to me, this sauce is a mustard sauce. It's, um, it's, it's really unique. It's not too sweet. It's not too spicy or anything like that, but this Sugar Taylor is a one place wonderfully with pork, particularly uh, a pork butt, pulled pork, and it lets the pork shine through. And I think in this instance, this will be a wonderful sauce to use. And I've always been scared, you know, just to use a sauce um, just to make the rub stick. You know, like I tell you, you can't really uh, taste the mustard and stuff like that, but Annie assures me that, man, go ahead, try this. Put this on this piece of pork before you rub. So I've got some here. I've actually got some of the sauce in, in, in a larger package. And so we're just going to to rub the, the pork down. And I've let the pork you know, come down in temperature just a little bit. And I want to say something about this pork. You know, the pork you always get from the grocery store, no matter what you do, um, you wash it, you pat it dry, and all that sort of thing. It's always, it seems like it's leaching water um, you know, water, saline solution, something like that. This pork is really dry to the touch. That just goes to show you, I mean, there's just, it's, it's just pork in here. It's not like a bunch of other, you know, additives. They're pumping it full of saline solution, brides or anything like that. I mean, this is the real deal, the real pork here from Heritage Farms, North Carolina. I mean, with these Cheshire pigs, I mean, they're really doing it right, y'all. But I, I'm, like I said, I'm just so fortunate to be able to to cook up a wonderful piece of meat like this. And all you can get a hold of, you just got to order off the website, and I'll put a link to that and everything. But anyway, so we kind of just rub this pork down like this. Now, as far as a rub goes, got my buddies over at Dizzy Pig. Um, you know, I was in their newsletter for November and everything like that. I love their barbecue rubs. I love that they're not too salty. They're not overpowering. And they have a lot going for them as far as enhancing the flavor of your proteins or your vegetables. And with this one, this is just the Dizzy Pig all-purpose rub. It's like their first rub. It's a really good one here. I think this will be a nice rub. Actually, this is the um, the regular grind. I kind of wish I had the coarse grind, but this will work just fine. We're just going to shake this on here, put a nice little coating. 
And oh wow, like I said, we, we don't need a whole bunch of, of bark or anything on, on this pig. I mean, this pig speaks for itself, but we will we'll put it down pretty heavy on here, just like you do on any piece of pork, and get all sides done. All right, y'all, so here's what we have. Our wonderfully coated oh, pork butt here. We've got, let's say, a sugar tailor on there as a base just to hold everything on. And then we've got some of this wonderful Dizzy Pig, just original rub. But the most important thing, the most important thing is the actual canvas that we're using here. We're using the best possible pork that one can come about. I mean, this is the chest iron pig. This is just heritage farms, just our white pig, beautiful marbling. I mean, you saw that pork and I'll post some stills of the pork. I know this camera probably didn't do it justice, but it's just gonna be some wonderful, wonderful looking pig there. And uh, we're gonna go tomorrow. I went ahead and put it on, if you can see here, I put on the little grill that's actually going on my smoker. I'm gonna use my electric smoker tomorrow just for fear of, I don't wanna get this too hot, I don't wanna scorch it or anything like that. I'm, I'm gonna go about 225 and just do the low and slow, the whole thing, I don't want anything to spike up to about 300 or something like that because we're dealing with such a lean pork on the outside, such a tender pork. I don't want, want to disturb it all. I don't, we'll do some testing. If I cook you know, some more pork butts like this in the future, I'll test with them with higher temperatures. Right now, I want to start really low, really slow. So anyway, we're going to put this in the bed in the freezer, in the roof, not the freezer, the refrigerator for tonight. Go ahead and get up early in the morning and stick this guy right in the electric smoker. Just, and I don't mean electric, you know, we're, it's, got wood chips in it and stuff like that and into the smoker and you go ahead and ease that temperature on up and get that just so smoke flavor i'm gonna use some apple wood tomorrow that's gonna be really really good all right y'all this beautiful piece of pork is set all night in the fridge with that rub on it and that sugar taylor sauce and i'm telling you it still smells wonderful it's developed a beautiful crust i got it sitting here fat cap up what I'm about to do now is I'm gonna put some probes in it this morning. I got my master built out there. That's that electric smoker. And what I've done, I've preheated it to 250. Now you don't have to preheat them things, but from what I've been reading and everything, especially on a cold morning like this, it's best to preheat them a little higher temp. That way you get that, uh, the chip box where you're gonna put the wood chips and everything, get that hot. So once I get my pork in there and get everything situated, turn back down to 225, put the wood chips in, that box ought to be real hot now go ahead and get the smoke started that's the reason i did that so what we're gonna do here y'all is um go ahead and put some probes in this guy got my eye grill two probes here let me see what i'm gonna try to do find a good spot oh, there's the bone and i'm gonna put in the bone of course and y'all i'll tell you what let's see bone bone you'll underneath the bone in this muscle right here there and I'm gonna put an, I might put another one in. I'm gonna go ahead and put another probe in here. I just do not. Last thing I want to do is dry this pork out. And this this is a beautiful piece of meat. You don't get something like this every day. So go over here and push that guy in. Path of resistance there. All right, so we got two probes in there. And I've got, I'm gonna put my temperature probe in the, in the uh, smoker too. Let's go ahead and go and get that to the smoker. All right, y'all, hope you can see there. Go ahead and slide this whole tray in here. Yeah, I'm gonna run these probes up through the, uh, up through the vent here. So I got my probes run. I got my, I got a temp probe in there, ambient, just to check uh, the temp against this um, against the master belt. So here's my ambient temperature. I'm gonna plug it into the eye grill tube first before I get all this to tangle up. Let's go ahead and shut the. Oh, I put a cup, couple cups of water down there in that water pan. You want to do that? Get some moisture in here. 
We shut the door on this thing. Okay, got that. Go ahead, plug this. I always put my ambient number one on the eye grill too. Then I go ahead and put my main probes in two and three. And they're just going to help us figure out what exactly is going on with this pork. We want to keep up with every waking minute of it, y'all. Also, I'm going to turn my um, I'm going to turn my thermostat here, set temp down to 225 like we want it. time still the same so we're gonna let that go for a minute and as soon as it hits well actually now it's already at 135 I'm gonna go ahead and put a loaf of uh, loaf I'm gonna go ahead and put a load of, uh, of wood chips in there y'all want to bear with me here real quick see we got a little auger here or a little wood chip loader I'm gonna load this up with some of these apple chips that's what I'm using here this is some of this western, this, this apple wood here. This is apple. Now, let's load this dude up. Now some people talk about soaking the chips in water and all that stuff. I don't, I just don't do all that right now, you know. Uh, I'll keep, I think what that does is may save you a little bit on the wood chips. In the end, you know, they don't burn quite as quick, but I don't care if I gotta use this whole bag with this piece of pork, but I don't take any chances. So go ahead and put these wood chips in here on the side. Go ahead and dump them. Make sure they're in there. Alright. Alright, y'all. So let's go ahead. Let this dude get to smoking out here. Ooh, this Heritage Farm pork. I'm so excited about y'all. Yeah. Going in, get some, making some coffee. We come back out here in about 45 minutes. We give it a check. While we're out here this morning, I wanted to talk to y'all just a minute more about this, this real Heritage Farms pork or this Cheshire pork and some of the reasons why it's so unique and why it has that marbling. You know, first off, you know, it's the Cheshire pig, you know, Heritage breed pig, a really, really uh, nice breed of pig that the bread for their tender meat and their marbling but another thing when you go to your local grocery or something like that and you buy pork butt or whether it's bacon or something else those hogs have been put on a feed lot usually been finished fed grain or something like that I only have about three different kinds of feed in their whole lives including that finishing feed with these these pigs they're out there on, on, you know out there on the farm walking around everything like that they feed them nine different kinds of feed I believe it was nine different kinds that way each level of that wonderful marbling and that wonderful flavor is built upon each other that way it gets this pork just it's, it's just wonderful and succulent as it is and I've done some other videos uh, I think I did a, a little bacon burrito video yesterday on this stuff and I've done the Kobe beef of pork where I kinda talked about this this pork a little bit and I also did a pork chop or I actually took a pork loin with a bone in and it'll be in this playlist too and I cooked that up with a blueberry wine reduction let me tell you you could just take it was just like you know when you eat a USDA prime steak how you get that that buttery taste in there from just the well distributed fats in the meat that marbling it was the same thing with this pork it was just that wonderful buttery nutty taste it wasn't that bland you know just that old other white meat pork I mean it tastes like, almost like chicken or something like that it was a wonderful taste to it a beautiful mild flavor that just came through and you could just tell the layers were there in that meat but anyway kind of wanted to talk with y'all about that another thing you see I got that the eye grill too going on top here and it's at 182 and my master built here is reading 167 see that's why I put it in there what I want to do probably different parts of that smoker or different temperatures so the master built 
is reading lower than what this eye grill is reading. I don't want to dry out that port, so what I'm going to do when we get up to temperature, I'm going to dial it down some on the master built until I get that 225 on my eye grill 2 right there on that top rack. And I removed all the other racks in the smoker. And, you know, unless you got food on, I don't understand what's the point of dripping all that stuff and having to clean all those racks. I'll go ahead and get them all out of there except the one I'm using. That's just another little tip. And have the water pan down there toward the bottom. But I did put the port up there toward the top because I figured all the smoke would draw up that way. I got my vent wide open up there. Like I said, I'm using these apple chips. Um, somebody said something about putting some charcoal in the chip box and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm not going to take that kind of chance, but I may try that another time, especially with some brisket or something like that. And this is a 30-inch model uh, master built. This isn't a 40-inch, so this is a smaller version. Anyway, just kind of wanted to go over that with y'all. Let's just keep on smoking. All right, so if you'll see, my device there says 226. The master built says 208. So what we're going to do, we're going to set that temperature on down about 207 okay and let that roll like that that way it'll bring it on down right where we need to be another cooking tip with this master bill here all right when i cut when i put the set temperature on there when i set it to one i mean 205 206 see it fell all the way down about 195 that's because this thing works by cutting on and cutting off but now and on my grill I actually fell down to 210 but now it's climbing back up so when this up here hits 205 this should be planed out at about 225 for my calculations if not when this hits 205 of the preset we'll go in here and we'll readjust some we'll fill it with that and we'll get it to where we're reading 225 right on that eye grill and I, I guess it's because you know it's on that top shelf up there and that hot hot air is rising and all that kind of stuff but you know these are just things you got to learn about your cooker you know your smoker your pit whatever you're cooking on man you just got to learn it food's been on there by an hour and 15 minutes or so so i went ahead and added another batch of applewood chips also add about three small chunks of hickory how y'all doing all right we're still out here smoking we've been smoking um for about eight and a half hours now, about eight hours and 15 minutes, I guess. We're going low and slow between 210 and 230, you know, 225, stuff like that. One thing I have noticed, I'm going to show you all something that this, uh, this, this grill does, or this smoker, is see how that, that graph looks here, how everything's going up and down like that? What it does, that graph there is between 210 and about 232. I've got it set right now about 210, okay? That's where I got to set because I was getting those higher readings and I was like, wait, well, hey, you know, what's going on with this thing? So I set it 210 to achieve 225. But what I figured out what it does is that burner in there, it lights and it burns kind of like your oven at the house or like your gas oven. It burns for a while, brings the temperature up. And I should bring it up a little higher than it needs to be. Then the temperature will fall on down in kind of the zone where you want it, but sometimes it'll dip down below that and that burner will come back on. So that's what's causing all these waves here in the chart. Um, as you can see here on the eye grill too, that's the chart from about 1.30. Uh, look, here's a chart from about 10.55 to about 1.30. As you can see, it's just still doing that dipping and ripping right there. Hopefully y'all can see that. Now as far as the, uh, the meat goes, I mean the meat's just steady. On a steady, uh, was well, did a climb and it's kind of, kind of on a stall and it's kind of picking up a little bit. It stalled out about 150 or so. Uh, we're, we're more in about the 160 ranges. I've got those two probes near about eight degrees apart. You know, one one could be a little bit thinner part of the port, but anyway, so we're about probably about seven degrees or so difference on on the on the pork. Yeah, my but let's see here. Here's all my my probes right here. It's about nine degrees there, but anyway. So, what we're gonna do now, at this point, especially while I've still got a little bit of daylight out here, I've got some um, apple cider vinegar, some real good stuff. Um, some of that, I forgot what brand it is, but you know, it's got the mother in the bottom of the bottle and everything, some real good organic stuff, whatever. We're gonna spray the pork down with that a little bit, and that's gonna do, it's gonna just really help out that crust a little bit. Now, 
I've been doing a lot of research and everything, and I don't think I'm going to get a bark like that, you know, asteroid-looking bark like you do when on, on, on the coal burner, you know, like my Weber up front. So we're just going to see. Y'all, this is, uh, I'll say, you know, you kind of learn with me here, but we're going to we gonna open my door, i tell you that, and we're going to see what we got in there. And we've been waiting. I hadn't opened it once. You know, except for that one time when I showed y'all right at the beginning. So let's go ahead and get this door open. Let this thing spray. Take a couple of photos for everything. This is this is nice here, though. I mean, I've, I've got a little bit of apple wood still left in there. And we'll just uh, open her up and see what happens. Oh, man, look at that smoke. Wow. It looks beautiful. Take a couple of pics. Gosh. Y'all can see there. Now. It looks like it's developing somewhat of a bark. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it down with this, with this uh, apple, si apple cider vinegar. Just get a little bit of moisture on it, just so it don't dry out or nothing like that. See that water pan down there? Make a little bit more water in that pan too, y'all. Go ahead and do that while we got the doors all open and everything else. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do some out here. I'm gonna go ahead and sauce this bad boy with the sugar taylor. Yes, sir. Since we're gonna be opening this up anyway, we got some of that sugar taylor done up. Go ahead and bust that open. Got a little bit of water, just this little thing of water right here. I don't want to put too much in that water pan. Just enough for it. just catch a fire or nothing. Then we're gonna take this sugar taylor, y'all. Oh, wonderful looking stuff here. And it's gonna baste up this this pork. Hopefully y'all can see. Sorry if you can't. I gotta I gotta make sure I get a good little coating on this beauty. And I don't know what people are talking about saying you can't get a bark with one of these smokers. Cause that looks like a wonderful little bark to me. It may just be this pristine pork that I'm using, y'all. Like I said, I mean this is the Chateaubriand, the Kobe beef, the pork, the shawl. So we'll go ahead and get that base it on up. That, oh, yes, sir. Get that on that, all up on that crust. That's going to make a wonderful base. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. We'll get one more snapshot of that thing. Before we close them up, I want to put on there. Try to do this stuff to help me keep my records too. All right, that'll be it. That's it, y'all. After I did that wonderful basting on there with that, uh, oh man, that sweet Taylor, sugar Taylor sauce, and um, went ahead and sprayed that vinegar on there. Man, oh man, I ain't gonna wrap him, no Texas crush, nothing. Because look, I can tell when a beautiful crust is forming on a piece of pork like that. And I've had a few others that did that, and it's almost like that crust, okay, is floating up off of the meat because that fat's just liquefying that little thin layer of fat. You can see that crust will start to crack a little bit. That's when you know you got a beautiful bark and a wonderful piece of meat there, y'all. I'm telling you, that sucker's going to go low and slow. That's why I'm kind of here talking to you now because we're losing daylight. And I know this thing ain't going to be ready to later tonight, especially with me opening that door for that long. But I just had to get some of that good sauce on there. Mm -mm -mm, y'all, it's going to be some good, good eating. Here after a while, I'll tell you what, you can't beat this, this Cheshire pork either. And we'll see how the old master build does. All right, y'all.
All right, y'all, we getting close. I got one of my probes in the meat here reading 190. The other one's only reading about 183 or so. Sorry about my lighting situation out here, but I just want to let this go a little bit longer before we pull this dude off because I want to make sure it's going to pull. It's, this is going to be real good. Pull pork, y'all. I don't want to mess nothing up with this beauty. All right, y'all, the pork is hit 198 degrees in the center. That's what I was looking for. Man, oh man, it's gonna be some good stuff. Let's go ahead and ease them on out of here. And open the door here. There we go. Oh yeah, man, that's beautiful. I hope you can see it here. I know this light's terrible. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ease it out. I'm just gonna pull that whole little drawer out there, I imagine. I'll need to, uh, Get rid of the probe, pull the probes out. Temperature probe here. So that gets hung up. Temperature is out. Like I said, roll on with this. Uh, with one probe and get hung up in the old deal. Put that thing right there. You look at that. That's a beauty. Let's get this dude on the side here and we'll mess with it in a second. Look at that there. And look, see this bone right here? Look how that thing just wiggles on out of there. That's just what you want to see. Mm, mm, mm. Go ahead and wrap this guy in full. Show you here. We'll take this and set it over here on this fall. Should have kept keeping gloves there. Let me give me some gloves on. Put these heat gloves on because that thing's hot and you got to be delicate with it because that thing will just fall apart. What we want to do is just bring the temperature down a little bit in that guy. Make rest here actually. Look at it. See, so he just wants to fall apart. Be real careful about this. Don't want to stick to that. Look here. Set this dude over here on this tin foil like that. Go ahead and get these gloves off and we'll wrap him. Oh man, it's gonna be good. Go ahead and just roll it one time in this foil here. Ooh, that's hot. Wrap this to all the foil I had left, man. That's just enough. Go ahead and wrap it like that. See there? Then what we want to do is set this inside of the Pyrex like that. Right? And then I've got a bath towel here. Just something to keep it insulated. I'm going to kind of lay that over it. Wrap it around a little bit. And let it hang out like this for about an hour. All right, that is some beautiful pork, y'all. I can't wait to give it a taste now. All right, y'all, I can hardly wait. It's been a little over an hour now. Let this wonderful pork butt just sit here and rest. We'll go ahead and just take him out of his wrappings here. And right down here on this beautiful teak cutting board. And let's see what we have here, y'all. So, take it out of the Towel. Let's be kind of careful here. I don't want to disturb the bark too much. So I have to look at that just gorgeousness. That bone right there. We're going to flip them over right there. Oh, yeah, y'all. Look at that. That's just a thing of beauty. <laughs> what I'm going to do. I'll try to pull it apart some here in the uh, in this tray. And just look at that pork right down there, y'all. That is unbelievable. Look at it just pull apart. Oh, the aroma of that pork is just phenomenal. Look at my bone here. Look at that. There's your bone right there, buddy. That is that's gorgeous. But what I'm going to do, 
I'm actually going to take this little piece of pork right here, set it aside. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Sit right there on that in that board. Wow. So just smell this. I mean, this is just absolutely gorgeous. Here. Let me turn around so you can see that bark. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? And we're just gonna, I've got a little cleaver here. It's a little bit too hot to, to pull right now. I'll pull here in a second, we're just gonna kind of cut through. Just gonna bust it up a little bit. Cause what I like to do is get that bark down to my pieces too. Real important to me to, to get to be able to taste that bark and bust everything up together like that. Look at that, y'all. That is absolutely gorgeous. But that's, that's not a right there. Look at that. Everything just all together. Wonderful. Look at this little piece right here, this lean. We got the, the bark all the way around it. Mm -hmm. Got the sugar tailor here, the sweet tailor. Sugar tail or whatever. Put this on there. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Y'all, that is just heavenly hall. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Tell you what. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Y'all, the texture of this meat just melts in your mouth. Ain't nothing like, oh man, this chest out pork. And it just got that wonderful bark on there from that dizzy pig. Like I said, we'll go with this uh, sugar tailor. Put a little bit of that on there. That just gives it the perfect balance. Kind of mix that in. I'm going to make me a sandwich here, y'all. i tell y'all what. I mean, we really, really built a masterpiece here today. You know, using all these, these great ingredients. This, um, you know, of course, main thing is Cheshire Pig. But, you know, with the Sugar Taylor and the, and the Dizzy Pig uh, rub to build that wonderful base onto that pork. I mean, you just can't, can't compete. Like I said, I'm going to make me a little sandwich here. Enjoy some of this. I mean, I can just, oh, this is just wonderful, wonderful pulled pork here, y'all. And uh, you just can't compete with stuff like this. This is the best barbecue that you can get right here. Man, oh, man. Mm -hmm. I'll tell y'all what. I went ahead and pulled most of that pork and put in this little Pyrex right here on top, top on it. Man, I've never had pork that was that tasty before. Being as a pork butt, generally with a pork butt, you know, put a lot of sauce on or something like that and overpower them with rub. And I kept pulling pieces, tasting as, as I was tearing that, that butt apart. And I tear them into bigger hunks uh, to put in the refrigerator safe. And then when you get ready to eat it, you tear it down some more. But anyway, uh, just every piece that I tasted had just so much flavor locked into it. So juicy. It wasn't like, I mean, it's, it's really hard to explain of how much better this was than just a normal pork butt or how you can tell the difference. It's like there was a, um, it was a really unique taste. It was almost like a, a, like a buttery taste or something like that to the meat to where there was really flavor there Whereas most of pork butt, like I said, you get all your flavor from the outer crust and then whatever sauce you put in there. But this one had flavor throughout, and I really thought that was an interesting point about it. But anyway, y'all, thanks for hanging with me for this long, low, and slow. You know, it was one of the ones that took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Heck, it's 12 o'clock at night now, so I just had me a sandwich. <laughs> I've been waiting around all day for that one. But anyway, 
Y'all, uh, you know, if you like my videos, please sub my channel, hit the like button and all that. And I'll put a link to where you can get some of this pork in the description box of the video. And I appreciate y'all. Hopefully I have some more uh, videos coming up soon on that smoker out there. You know, I'm proud of that thing. It did good on this butt. It really did. Put that nice little bark little crust on there. That's what I thought it was going to do. And on the back side, there was a lot of paint. Let me show you here real quick because I know everybody's going to be like, no. Um, you see back over there some of the bigger pieces see you can see that pink and stuff like that there was a little bit of smoke ring on there too so I didn't think it, it'd leave really a smoke ring you know, without having charcoal but it did, did really good and I could taste that smoky flavor to it so I like that applewood as well so anyway thank y'all and good night